Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's career discovery presentation on understanding military education benefits. I'm Amanda Waidula, University and Student Development Coordinator at Bank of North Dakota, and I will be leading you through today's webinar. Today's webinar is on military educational benefits for students who are thinking of joining the military after high school. And um, we're joined by the National North Dakota National Guard today. So just some housekeeping items. On the menu of the webinar, there is both a chat and a Q&A function that we encourage all of you to use um, for the questions or comments that you have about today's webinar. And we will um, answer those throughout the webinar as well as at the end. So please, please answer your questions. Uh, Sergeant Jonathan Hofer is today's presenter. Sergeant John, John Hofer has served both part-time and full-time in the Army and the National Guard for 21 years. Having served as a medic and engineer, he now assists people in joining the National Guard and getting started with their collegiate and professional careers. All right, John. Thank you very much, Amanda. Uh, very pleased to be here today uh, to get the opportunity to give a quick presentation and. Um, trying to understand everything that uh, these young people are trying to figure out. Uh, good afternoon to you all and whoever might listen or watch this in the future. Uh, as Amanda said, uh, I'm Sergeant First Class Hofer. Uh, I have been in for quite some time and I, I, I think this is a, a passion for me. Uh, I love the ability to help people out uh, whether I actually have any influence or not. Um, it's just uh, providing information so that people can make the best decision possible for themselves. So uh, I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Amanda and Rebecca. And um, we'll get right into it. So uh, the understanding military education benefits. Most benefits out there are very comparable. Um, I will speak from uh, my be on, on behalf of the North Dakota National Guard, but our benefits, as I said, are similar to the Air Guards, and they're similar to the Army, the Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, there's all kinds of things out there. It just depends on what each individual will be interested in and what opportunities are there, because those opportunities might help drive the ability to get those military education benefits. Um, if you could click to the next slide, Amanda. Thank you. So I just want to kind of give a, a brief, uh, I mean, why do these education benefits exist? So it's, it's us as a nation, we recognize in our youth, like, hey, we've got to invest in our abilities, you know, make us stronger and um, really when it comes down to it, just better set for life. So uh, long ago, the government realized, hey, we've got to do better, we've got to do more, and uh, that's why these uh, education benefits exist today in their current form. Um, could you click on the, the next slide as well? So obviously they're there to uh, help you not have to spend the money that's in your pocket already, or even if you didn't have any money in your pocket. Um, there's some money, that goes directly to the institution. So whichever school that you choose to attend, whether it be a technical school, a, um, an associate uh, provide, a degree providing program, or you're headed to go get your, mat, your bachelor's at a four-year institution, it doesn't matter if it's a college, university, could even be uh, some kind of trade school. There are so many ways that you could use this money to pay for that education to make your resume stronger. There's also money that is money that goes directly to your pocket. So instead of going to the institution, this is money that allows you to have money in your pocket so you can focus on your education rather than having to work full time while you're in school. So there's uh, those are the two biggest ways that you can assist yourself or support yourself by partnering with an organization that has a program already set. It may not even be a military program. I know that there are 
programs out there that recognize potential just the way that we do. All in a way that you can avoid the unplanned debt. Um, and I say that unplanned debt, meaning that's not you know super scary if you know what you're going into, that you're using it to invest in yourself, that you can then be better and uh, I don't know, just be, again, be better prepared for life. So making sure that whatever organization has a set plan for you and uh, most likely a contract saying, this is what's set forth and this is what is to occur because of this plan. Uh, could you click to the next slide again, Amanda? Thank you. So we get into that, how does it work? How do you, how do you even get the opportunity to have these education benefits? Well, we have a, a basic set of pre-qualifying questions. So most organizations out there will have a target uh, group of people. We, the military, uh, we might adjust our ages for different uh, preferences, but here's an example, is age 17 to 35. And some people, they question like, well, wait a second, I'm not even an adult yet. The reason we go on the side of, uh, or just prior to being an adult, is the fact that, again, we're recognizing your potential in that soon you will be a young adult capable of going and doing whatever you set out you know, to do, uh, whatever path. But we also cut it off on the, the 35, or age 35, because we'd like to give somebody the opportunity to you that if they did start later in life, you know, where they're still fairly young, they have the opportunity to complete a full career and be able to retire. Uh, it is possible to get age waivers, um, but that is the target age range. Um, to On the front side of it, we also are able to start gathering people's information one month prior to their 17th birthday. But on this side of it, it does require your parents' permission to allow you the decision-making power. Um, are there any questions so far? If not, uh, we'll keep going. There uh, are not any questions so far, but just um, uh, for all attendees, go ahead and answer or ask any questions that you have in the questions box on the menu of the webinar. I appreciate that, Amanda. If you have any questions as well, I know that you, uh, whenever we've spoken in the past, you're always uh, able to kind of be that uh, back and forth, uh, even to help prompt questions as well. So I appreciate Absolutely. that. Uh, so the second step of this is, uh, again, how do I pre-qualify? They do ask people to be citizens of the United States. And if they aren't already a citizen, you can become qualified in this manner is if you get your naturalization. So obviously you have to go through the paperwork to become a naturalized citizen. Or if you're not yet in that situation, you can apply as a permanent resident. So if you are a green card holder, you can then still apply for these and it can also help you get further closer to the, your citizenship as well. John, uh, what is the typical um, like timeline process for becoming a naturalized citizen or a permanent resident? I've seen it go both very quickly and take a painstakingly long time. Uh, most of the people would have it within, I don't know, I mean ballpark, I would say one to five years. Okay. And that's having, having come across many people here in the United States, that have been here quite a while, and both some that have eventually achieved theirs, and then some are still waiting through the, the application process. I just spoke to somebody last week that said, I should get it any day now. So Wonderful. It, it's a great question, thank you. Thank you. And uh, the next slide, please. So this, this is probably the one of the most common misconceptions. Um, we come across people who 
basically think that they either don't qualify already or that they'll never qualify. So when, when we talk about the physical portion of this, you know, qualifying, like how do I, how, how can I get these education benefits? You're basically just asked to be in generally good health. And the, the way I, the reason I say that is it doesn't require you to perform physically in any way in order to ask for the job. So if, if you are in generally good health, it's possible that you qualify for the, the job and then also the benefits that come with it. Um, so how that is done is you have a physician give you an exam and to make sure, I mean, they make sure that, uh, you know, not, not describing every aspect of the, the, the physical exam, just in general, at the end, after they've checked you out, they wanted to give you a thumbs up saying, yep, you're healthy. It's up to you, you know, whether you take advantage of this or not. So most of the time when people think, well, I'm not in good shape. Really, it has nothing to do with being in good shape because most people could train up and get better at what they do or become stronger, faster, things like that. But that's really not what we're talking about at all. We're just talking about, you know, are you in, in generally good health? Um, and most people that if they're in a, or most young people, if they're in a gym class and they can go out and do those things, they have a pretty good chance. Or if they, um, if they don't have major illnesses or uh, things that have, prevent them from doing everyday life, a lot of people could qualify. It's just a matter of going in and asking the questions, you know, doing a sit down interview saying, you know, tell me what I need to do or ask those detailed questions because just uh, randomly thinking, oh, I'll never qualify. You, you might never know and then you could have taken advantage of something as long as you're interested. So that's a difficult one, but it, it requires each and each individual to actually go and ask do I qualify? Thank you, Amanda. Uh, next slide, please. This one is also uh, pretty hefty when it comes to people thinking that they either are good to go or just won't ever qualify. We ask if you've had any law violations. And this is just uh, helps set the people up for success. Because even if somebody does have law violations, as long as it's not so substantial that it would be really detrimental to somebody's uh, employment and making sure that they can actually move forward in their career, whether it be security clearances or all kinds of opportunities, we want to know everything. So as long as there, somebody is up front, and even if they needed to get in with uh, a waiver if need be, letting us know about it is the biggest thing up front and it's just saying hey uh we're aware of this we understand that that's in your past and that right now this is who you are uh, we do have people avoid drugs obviously um, we always do um, sex offender checks when somebody joins um, it's all basic stuff because most most often the most law violations we come across are traffic I mean, that's where any young person might ever receive their first law violation with a parking ticket, speeding ticket. But none of those things can prevent somebody from getting in. We just upfront ask, do you have any law violations and what are they? And we would do a background check. The nice thing about this is the fact that it allows somebody to start a professional career and literally, I mean, or figuratively, write it on your resume that you are squeaky clean and now you can prove it because if somebody hires you based on hey you're somebody that we're looking for and we want to hire you you can now prove that from the age of possibly 17 before you were even an adult to you know wherever you land later in your professional life you can say that you've always been that person before you ever were even out of high school, possibly. 
So it's a, a big boon to somebody's resume and a, a lot of, um, provides a lot of weight. You know, that's what most employers out there are looking for is like, hey, can I trust this person? So there you have it. Um, that's when it comes to legal. Uh, next slide, please. Education. This one I don't think is difficult. Um, we do get a lot of questions about this. Is uh, it, The question is basically just, are you on track to graduate high school? And if you are, then you are qualified when it comes to this. Or if you already have your high school diploma uh, or your GED, it's possible to get in with a GED as well, and then you would qualify to ask for these education benefits. So uh, I always recommend stay with the program that exists. I know uh, some young people are ready and just want to jump out there as quick as possible, especially in this given you know climate with COVID going on. I know that the, the traditional high school experience has been interrupted, uh, but it also goes out there to those college students as well. As long as you have been on the path and sh can show people like, hey, I'm a good student, then this is absolutely something that you are, you should be able to say, check the block. I'm good to go with education. Any other questions right now? Um, yes, there is one question. Was there a time when those with a GED weren't accepted into the military? There have been times where they didn't yet accept them. And then once in a while, if you go to the different military branches, one might accept it, one might not. So again, it, it goes down to what's the current climate, what's the regulation. Um, there are different things that, for example, if I bump back to the physical portion of it, if I was to compare the Army to the Marine Corps, um, one accepts tattoos and the other one does not. So that's just an example here is where you'd say, you know, can I get in, a G in with a GED? One branch might offer it and the next might not. Uh, it would just be down to asking those questions like, hey, can I qualify with this? And then uh, sometimes depending on, uh, we'll get to it in a second with your ASVAB scores, can you qualify for all of the education benefits or only some at the given time? But that's a great question. Again, it's it's always uh, doing your research just like this. I, I mean, if somebody sits down and listens to the webinar, they'll find out a great detail of information, but then it will always come down to going and sitting down with that individual that can directly help you go through the application process, whether it be Bank of North Dakota or the National Guard. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, you must go through the steps and do the homework to be able to understand everything and then decide whether you're going to go through with it. Thank you again. That's a good mm -hmm. question. You bet. All right. And then the next slide. So as I mentioned, uh, what what do you qualify for? So this is something that I think it scares, I think testing scares most people. And that is why I tell people to not think of the ASVAB as a test. Sure, it's a whole bunch of questions, but there is no pass fail. It's only, this is where I'm at, at this given time. I've seen people take this as a sophomore, junior, senior. I've seen them take it in college and well beyond. It just means I'm right here at this time. So, I mean, I've even taken it myself later on, you know, after I've already been in the service for quite some time, and I'm always about the same time, but I might answer a few questions differently on a different day and get a different score. So yeah, it, it takes into account that, you know, somebody might even be having a bad day and they say, well, we'd expect you to score anywhere from this range to this range. You know, when we would guess, hey, this is where you're going to score. 
but it's honestly, it's a, what do you already know from the day you were born to right now? And I know that so there's a lot of people that attempt to study and practice and it might work for some people, but it's honestly just a shoot from the hip. What do you know? And there are a bunch of different sections. There's paragraph comprehension, math knowledge, um, arithmetic reasoning, word knowledge. There's an electrical section, a general science, mechanical comprehension. There's even a section on shapes. So it gives us a good picture of where could we best place you and what types of jobs not only uh, would you be best placed in, but even if you have interest in one thing and you weren't aware of your skills or your abilities in another genre, then it might pique your interest saying, oh, I didn't even know that I could you know, ought, or get picked up with uh, a job like that, or I didn't even know I was good at that stuff. It happens quite often that uh, out of all the positions that we can hire somebody for, uh, people sometimes choose surprising, you know, entry level positions that they never even knew that they'd be interested in, and then they love what they do. So again, this is not a, I, I stress, to not think of it as a test, <clears throat> also because people have a lot of times test anxiety, whether they realize it or they they make that known or not. Um, most most often when people take the practice test, it lets them see what it's like, and then we can guesstimate what they'll do on the ASVAB when they take the real test. And uh, it's pretty easy to get a, uh, a predictive score just using somebody's ACT score. So if, if somebody has an ACT in the teens, let's say 15, they scored a 15, then we could expect them to maybe score at least like maybe 40 to 45. And uh, our minimum score specifically for the Army and the National Guard is 31. So, and, and again, People wonder, like, why that that seems so low? Like, how can I get a 31 and you know be hired or or get be able to get these education benefits? Well, the way that we look at it, it's uh, it's that percentage. It's just you're saying out of 100 people, then you did better than 31 people, or 40 people, or 50. So it's not a based on a A B C D grading scale or, at all. Uh, that we're so commonly trained to think like the highest you can get is a 99 and the minimum that we would like somebody to get is a 31. It's possible to get in with a, a lower score, but then again, then there, there aren't as many opportunities and they might not be often opportunities, but it is possible. John, um, we have two questions. Um, the yeah, first please. one is, is there going to be an ASVAB in the schools this year? Yes. So the ASVAB, uh, when it's taken in the school, we actually call it a SASVAB because we place the word student in front of the acronym. So it's the SASVAB. And each individual school's counselor actually schedules it with MEPS, the Military Entrance Processing Station. It is a, it is one, it is free, and it is a great way to even just practice your test taking ability. Uh, I've known a lot of people that use the ASVAB to practice for the ACT so they can boost their score. You know, and even if they were retaking the ACT or not, uh, it's generally taken during their, their junior year and each individual school schedules it whenever they would like it to happen. I know that uh, there are many schools ha that have already taken it, but uh, there's obviously many that have it scheduled and then some that still need to schedule it uh, so really the, the answer is yes they are being taken and uh, it would just be to get in touch with their local school and they will find out exactly when their test is by chance a little caveat by chance if somebody does miss the opportunity to take the ASVAB there's other ways to obtain another chance 
whether you partner with another school that's close by, if your school has already taken it, and then you'd like to just drive to the next neighboring school on the date, you know, it, you can be granted the ability because you're, you're still doing something that's, I guess, approved. Um, and it is for an official reason. You're not just skipping school or anything. But it can also be done um, on the at least the western half of the state. We do a uh, an ASVAB every third Thursday of the month. So coming up here uh, and just looking at a, a schedule. The next ASVAB would be on the 15th in Bismarck. Um, in Fargo, I'd have to double check. Um, most of the people can actually go to Fargo with any service representative and they'd be able to take it at MEPS. But that's pretty much five days out of the week. But yes, all the schools, uh, not all schools are mandatory uh, taking it but uh, most schools do offer it. Thank you, that's another good, great question. Awesome, um, and then the next one is about the cutoff, or is about the scores, and you kind of alluded um, that for the National Guard, the 31 is the lowest score um, that they'll accept for the most part. Is that pretty common across all branches, or does every branch have a different lowest score that they'll accept? Uh, it's pretty common, but also uh, different branches look at different scores as well. They might even score it differently, but uh, it's just that generally uh, what those different scores are placed into is uh, category A, category, uh, that's A1, category A2, and then there's also a category uh, A3, and there's a, a B1 and a B2. And there's a cat. Um, well, uh, well, basically, it cut, they're broken into so many different sections, and uh, really, it's just a matter of getting that minimum score, which can go all the way down to a score of 20 in a Category Four position, which we don't always have Category Four positions throughout the year, but. Um, I know that recently, it was August, the last time I saw somebody get um, placed in a category or was able to qualify and get in with a category four slot was August. Yep. And then I okay. think recently they had a, a three other positions. I don't know if anybody filled those positions yet, but yeah, it's just uh, up to see what you get on the score on the test. And even if you haven't yet gotten the score that would be required, the nice thing is that, again, it does not cost you anything and you can retake the test. The first few times they have you take the test, they would ask you to at least spend a month in between to maybe be better prepared. Uh, and that's only if you're taking it in an official capacity. But if you take it multiple times and then you're still not at that point, they would ask you to wait longer Then it can be up to six months in between. But there's no limit to how many times people can take it. I've seen people take it at least five, six times, and then they finally get the score. And it just comes down to being motivated. Perfect. All right. And then the next question um, is, is there a link uh, for those test dates? Is that posted anywhere, like on a website or that we could send well, out to attendees? Um, that would be, again, to just contact any local recruiter, because really any one of the branches, they're all gonna use the exact same site in the exact same date. But it's for the entire Western portion of the state, that MET site, it's a military entrance test site. Uh, it would be done at the Bismarck Armory and it's done in the computer lab. And it's uh, the evening of the third Thursday of each month and somebody can sign up as late as the day prior. Perfect, thank you. And that mm -hmm. ends the questions so far. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, really that, that's why I put that on the slide. It's try to remove any test anxiety. It's just, what do you know? You know, and most people who go to school here in the United States have a pretty good educational background. 
whether they believe that or not, is to do okay on the test. So they might surprise themselves in saying, wow, I, I didn't know that I was okay. Uh, I'm good to go. Uh, next slide, please. So this kind of just gets down to the bare bones of this. So again, most education benefits are going to be very similar. Um, this example is the current tuition assistance for the National Guard. Uh, so here in the state of North Dakota, tuition assistance each year that somebody wears the uniform. You know, it, there's a reset every October 1st. So a few days ago, there was a reset for a whole bunch of students across the state. And if those students are wearing a military uniform, they most likely have some ability to use this money and then maybe not even pay. <laughs> I've known people that did, never paid a cent to a school. Um, not their own money, but they were partnering with an organization that allowed them to you know, better themselves, help them write that, write, uh, that better resume taking advantage of the education benefits. So each year, right now, it's $4,000 per year, and that's the money that goes directly to the school. Uh, next slide, please. This is the money that goes to an individual's pocket. So the way that that happens is that they validate, you know, they verify that the, the student is actually attending school, that they're still in school every single month. Um, they understand, you know, understanding that somebody could start school and then drop out, they wouldn't want to keep paying them because then they have to recoup the money because they weren't doing the thing that they signed up for. So they validate that. And uh, you can qualify for the GI Bill and also the GI Bill kicker. So as you see there on the slide, it's uh, the GI Bill. It uh, bumps up each July, you know, due to inflation, whatever other reasons. I've seen it climb um, over the last 10 years, last decade, significantly. Um, this year it bumped from, I believe, 384 to 397. And uh, the GI Bill kicker currently stands at $350 per month. So without having to get a part-time job, somebody would be able to attend school and be able to focus on school without saying, hey, I need to go work 40 hours a week as well. And even if they do get a part-time job, this would be able to offset so they don't have to spend all that time away from their studies or away from classes that they should be focusing on. Um, it's a significant amount of money, um, but it just depends on do they get a decent score on the test to qualify for it. Because it is possible for somebody to get a decent test score to be able to enlist and they have the ability to get the tuition assistance but not always the gi bill and the kicker so it depend on if they're able to get a, a 50 and up they add on the kicker and it depends on what length of contract whether they get the gi bill or they choose to forego it We understand that some people choose to enlist not because of the, the education benefits all the time or they want to test the waters first. Um, one thing I did want to uh, make sure that I mentioned that uh, isn't, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I add it in my slides in the future, but uh, we currently have a program that because there's plenty of students that are focused on education, uh, we want the ability for them to have the confidence in saying, I'm going to be able to focus on this. And that's why we have a, a program that's called College First. So they will make sure that even if somebody is a soldier, they can be in place for minimum two years of school. Like they, they won't go anywhere. They won't be focused on doing anything other than going to school. And that, again, you, for those details, They'd have to sit down with their local recruiter and, and ask. But uh, 
I think it's a great opportunity and it allows the ability to be doing both at the same time to both get that job experience, you know, what, what's going on out in the working world. I have a, a great uniform to wear because that's perfect. It's a, we're in the profession of arms, of course, but it is a professional job. And then also they're able to focus on school at that time. Uh, any other questions right now? Not yet. Okay. Uh, can you jump to the next slide, please? So here's an example. Um, it's very similar across the state at whether it be a private institution or any of the other state schools. But because I'm located uh, here in Bismarck, I uh, oftentimes use BSC as an example. So you can see the tuition. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, the North Dakota National Guard allows the ability for somebody to be covered up to 100% of the tuition cost. So right now, the tuition for this current school year is approximately it's $4,816. And the National Guard can cover that fully. Now, an example of student fees, uh, whether it's at, you know, exactly or somebody would incur a little bit more or a little bit less uh that 879 the room and board is taken from their website 6,744, and then books and supplies of course can vary as well but that approximate total is just over 13 grand and it's based on that 15 um credits per semester so if somebody was going less than that they would of course then have less money used of their tuition but then it just ends up being something that's saved. Maybe they're gonna spread that tuition costs over multiple semesters worth rather than uh, using it all up in one shot um, or straight through you know, a fall semester or spring semester. Some people go, go to school year round. Uh, and then of course it's the double room plan standard meal so on the other side of that uh, is the North Dakota National Guard's benefits. Um, so when adding all that together, that money ends up being more than the annual cost. So a lot of people that I would know, they might have a part-time job as well, but they wouldn't necessarily have to. Um, it allows the ability to say, hey, you know, if I partner with that organization, it looks like if I'm if I plan this out and I'm smart with my money, I'm going to have the money to be able to go to school. So whether somebody you know partners with a lender and they say I want to make sure that I've got shore up this whatever else I think I'm going to need because I'm going to buy a car or whatever they uh, may need for their life, you know their own choosing. It allows the ability for them to be going into their collegiate career with a plan, you know, with an organization that hired them and, you know, maybe the extra lending money to make it all work. And I, I find that most often when people, if they actually develop any kind of a plan, they're much more confident stepping out into the adult world uh, versus some people who just say, well, I'm going to see what my friends do and then go try that. Those people are the ones that are more apt to stumble or, or fall, you know, and it'll take a little while for them to pick themselves up and, and become successful versus going into this with a plan and then maybe surprising themselves. So I love the ability to compare costs and then show people, you know, no matter which state it is or which uh, school it is within the state, uh, we can provide people pretty much precise numbers with what they'll actually get to go to school at that institution. Any questions with this slide? Not seeing any questions, but if they come up, we will get them to you. Okay, much appreciated. Uh, what's the next slide? So, and this is uh, something extra. Um, Sometimes people are just saying, hey, I want to do this. This is what I'm going to go to school for. I just met with a young woman last week 
who's a, a high school senior. And I think she plans a uh, career in law enforcement. And she happened to ask about the, both the program out there and then also the training. So we help them. Most people don't realize that the training provided in the military is equivalent to college credit. Because there are accredited schools with the, you know, within the military that provide the ability to transfer those credits to a institution, whether it be, again, you know, collegiate, you know, or uh, I mean, uh, college, university, tech school, whatever. As long as that that institution has some credits that would be equivalent, they may be a lot of electives possibly, but it also allows them to save that money. But also at the same time, whatever they choose for their training could afford them the ability to have a bonus added to their contract, which is significant when it, uh, you know, somebody's planning the ability to pay for four years of school or beyond, or even whether it be two years of school, because uh, it's not always just the school costs, it's transportation, it's housing, it's so many things in life. So having the ability to start out with a little bit of a cushion, uh, the way that they offer these bonuses is just if somebody chooses one of the positions that their one's attached to, it just goes on their contract. And that's it's an automatic thing that when they are done with their training, they pay them half of the bonus. And then further into their career at about the halfway point, they pay them another uh, fourth of it. And then during or closer to the end of their contract, they pay them the last fourth. John, what are some examples of some of those positions um, out there that are offering these bonuses? I'm glad you asked. Um, so, for example, the the young woman I met with last week, she wanted to be a military policewoman. So, which another great reason to choose that job is the state of North Dakota allows somebody who's been trained as a military policeman or woman to do a short bit of training and then be hireable with any police organization in the state. So it, it's it's kind of like a win, 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 win. You know, it almost seems like a too good to be true. Like you, so you're saying that there's a program and then I'm hireable and then there's money there and available. It's, it, it's a yes, 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 that's true. Um, but there are other positions like being a mechanic of many different, um, I would say genres, whether it be, uh, we call it wheeled vehicle mechanic and you kind of learn a lot of different stuff. Um, somebody could come in as a, just learning how to cook. Uh, sometimes people come in with a plan saying, I'm gonna own my own restaurant someday. So it's a great way to, hey, I'm gonna get in and learn a lot of, about feeding a lot of people. And then I'm gonna have this nest egg, or maybe not a nest egg, maybe that's a, a poor term to call it, but a chunk of money, you know, and, and to save that up uh, and then not have to spend that money to use it for school, maybe somebody would say, I'm gonna use this for a future business opportunity. There's so many different ways it could work out for somebody, so. Uh, let's see, there are other positions, there's engineering positions as well, some some as more uh, bridge building, uh, there's also a combat engineer where you learn to deal with explosives. Uh, I actually had an opportunity to do that training this summer and it was awesome. Um, but yeah, there's, there's multiple types of positions and uh, again, it would just be asking that local person what are the current opportunities right here, right now, and what what is attached to those opportunities? So speaking of military careers, I think when a lot of students are like, okay, I'm going to go into the military, they just kind of think, okay, I'm going to be a soldier, I'm going to, you know, do my thing, all the soldier stuff, but there's tons of other jobs um, available and it really depends on on the branches too. So how can students learn um, what types of careers are available in the different military branches? Would it just be talking to a recruiter, checking out that branch's website? I would say, of course, yes, but it, it would definitely, 
You can do the online research and you can probably come up with a lot of information. But to be able to bounce that information off of somebody who's local to the, the current place that you live and ask what's available here versus elsewhere. Because you, you could get different answers when I, if you compare to it, like, well, who, I live here in Bismarck. What opportunities are here versus, like, I want to go to school down in Texas. Or somebody says, well, I'm here in Bismarck. What's the difference between here in Bismarck or over in Fargo? So there will be some differences, but a lot of people wonder, you know, they think of joining the military, you're just going to go fight bad guys which is so drastically far from the truth. Um, most people that join the military end up not being any kind of a warfighter. And if you choose to go that route, that's awesome. That's all well and good because we need every type of position. But for example, I joined the army as a medic and those medical skills have translated, you know, you know, throughout my life into other things, you know, whether it be other employment or even things that benefit my family and my friends. So when somebody does come in and they, they're just thinking about checking it out, I, I always appreciate that because it shows me that somebody's doing the homework, they're asking the questions, and it's honestly sometimes maybe even the hardest step is just to take that first one, is to just go and ask. And then bring a parent, bring bring somebody, bring a bring your best friend. In fact, because they might think of something or ask a question that you didn't even think of, and you maybe never would have. But if it helps you figure out whether you might like something or say, "Oh no, never going to do that," because that's not for me. But uh, there are so many desk jobs. I mean, uh, even in preparing for this webinar. One of the guys, he's a go-to person for me, is our IT guy. He's our computer guru. Like, hey, I, you know, my computer's not doing this, or my tablet won't won't work right. I call him up, and so I mean, if somebody is interested in computers, we have positions like that too. Or if you want to, again, if you want to blow stuff up, but not may have it be combat related, or if you want to build things, I mean, we can hire a carpenter. You like to build things let's give you some training. So there's so many possibilities for any young person out there is just coming and asking that question and seeing what that local position is offering. And there's even a bunch of full-time positions. Somebody might initially get in as a part-time job just to check it out and see what the benefits are. But on a weekly basis, we see openings for full-time positions. And it's most of the time because people are moving up the career ladder, you know, and realizing that people are ending their careers in, in positive situations saying, hey, I, after I've served for so long, I'm retiring. And then everyone else is then taking that step up into those people's positions, all the while making room for any young person out there that's just really looking for an opportunity and something that will better their, their lives. So I... I greatly appreciate that that uh, question too, because that's really, <laughs> it's kind of why I, I love doing this, is getting to see that person's now much better situation where they had no benefits before and now they have. And they were trying to struggle paying for college before and now they're, they feel like they've got something and an actual plan. What, uh, can you slip to the next slide? Unless there's more questions, Elena. Uh There are no questions yet, but all attendees, you can go ahead and um, put your questions in the question box. Okay, awesome. So why are these benefits available to me? Uh, I tell people this all the time. We hire based on potential. And I, I, I wish that everyone not everyone, uh, uh, most other big companies would do it this way and create some type of program or uh, a benefit package because of it. Uh, 
And I really think we'd be more successful in building everyone's resumes saying, hey, you got those skills, you got these skills, you got these skills. Because when we hire based on potential, we're recognizing that somebody's already kind of got the stuff, but we'd like to help them become more. So when people hear that, like, oh, well, you think I could do this? Like, oh, I maybe I should start thinking that too. And then creating that beneficial relationship because we need all of these young people to someday take our places. We need them to have the ability to lead and just have their those same professional opportunities that we've all had. You just have to show them the right path or show them multiple paths and then hope they you know pick a good one and, and you know something that's gonna let them be successful. So that's why the benefits are available because we recognize the ability that they will have already showing what they've got. And that's, hey, I, I was born here, I'm a citizen already, I'm healthy and I don't get into trouble all the time and I think I wanna try this. What's the, the, the next slide, Amanda? So again, like uh, Amanda keeps asking, um, what do you do? <laughs> and I, again, again, young people, when you're trying to make sense of it, or parents out there, counselors out there, trying to make sense of it all, it's really, it comes down to it. I had a few counselors recently just kind of, they'll pull me aside, ask one random or one really quick pointed question. If that helps somebody figure it out, I mean, that's awesome. You're getting it straight from the horse's mouth. And um, that's there's probably no better way to do it other than just go ask the questions. There's nobody out there that I know of that's gonna be frustrated that somebody chooses to go another path. Like, sure, we'd love to help everybody, but we, we honestly know that not everybody's going to join. Um, but again, uh, I guess in, in closing or kind of wrapping all this up, all the branches have very similar benefits and opportunities. Different jobs might be available here or there, or maybe there's more focus on one than the other, but they're all very similar. And uh, putting on a uniform, no matter what color or what camo it is, it's gonna, it's gonna be one of those things in life that you can say, you know what, I did that, and that's pretty awesome. So even if you didn't choose to continue that and have like a big giant long career, what if it was short? You can say, man, I, I did I did more than most other people ever even think of. So uh, again, do your research, schedule that interview, or even just ask a few questions. You don't have to schedule an interview right away. Uh, but of course, do that last piece of it too, is if, if you are gonna be short or you're not sure on money, um, to ask a local lender to make sure that you're going to have enough and that uh, there isn't that unfinished plan where you you know you end up going to college and investing and then man I'm falling a little bit short because then you'll you'll still need to go do it so if you go into it from the beginning man I, I love meeting those people because they really really have it figured out. And there is some major confidence coming along with them. I think the, the last slide is next, Amanda. So my contact information here uh, can be reached. Uh, I always say the best case is in person, but if you can't reach me in person, um, right here in Bismarck, I can be reached by phone, you know, text, call, um, email there as well. And uh, I always appreciate conversation, you know, I can talk till I'm blue in the face, but I'd rather have a conversation with somebody and then let them come out of it a little more confident. So I, I uh, again, appreciate the opportunity to speak today, Amanda. Yes, you are so welcome. It was a joy to have you. Um, 
Thanks again. And I think really what it all boils down to for students is no matter what route they go, and you really drilled it home, was making a plan, whether it's college, going straight to work, or joining the military, or some combination of the three. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, last call for questions quick. Our next career discovery webinar is this Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time, and we will be covering the 2021 20, 22 that's a lot of 20s fafsa where kathy mueller from mapping your future will talk about the fafsa form what's new to this year's fafsa and will answer any student and parent questions that um, you might have so we're very excited to have that as a part two to last week's um, financial aid webinar where we talked about uh, the different forms of financial aid. So you can register for that by going to careercompass.nd.gov and going to the Career Discovery tab and registering for that webinar and any of the other webinars um, that are on there. And keep checking back because we're adding more all the time. We're really excited about it. Um, so we are not seeing any more questions. So John, once again, thank you so much. Um, and everyone, thank you for attending today and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you again.